This is your time. Hi, welcome to another episode of The Way of Excellence. I'm your host, Stanley Bronstein. Today, we're interviewing Anya Halama. Anya is a world traveler who has helped thousands of heart-centered entrepreneurs align with their ideal clients to attract wealth, health, love, mental health, and spiritual wealth. Anya started out working a corporate job that left her living paycheck to paycheck. Exhausted and worn out, she was limited to her dreams of a better life. Anya longed for the freedom to live life on her terms and time to enjoy life to the fullest. One day, she, deci one day she decided to take a leap of faith. She quit her job and she began a journey of self-discovery. The journey has taken Anya all over the world and helped her create businesses, learning new skills and sharing them along the way. Anya is a millennial master, manif sorry, manifester, spiritual mentor, plant medicine facilitator, integration coach, and intuitive digital artist. She is also an intuitive healer, Reiki master, angel healer, EFT certified practitioner, Ho Aponopono master, Akashic records reader, angel card intuitive, and law of attraction master. Entrepreneur Magazine listed Anya as a top millennial powerhouse and U.S. Reporter has listed Anya as one of the top 10 entrepreneurs to follow. She has spoken on national stages like the Napoleon Hill Foundation and the Women Gone Wild Summit. Her expertise has been featured in media outlets, including Brains Magazine, Yahoo News, Entrepreneur Magazine, LA Weekly, U.S. Reporter, New York Weekly Times, So Influential, and others. Most recently, her work was featured on a New York Times Square billboard. Anya is a two-time best-selling author of the books Rebel Guide to Spirituality and Women Gone Wild, The Wealth Edition. She is the host of Spirituality for Badass Babes podcast and is the founder of Expansion Alchemy. How are you doing, Anya? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for having me, Stanley. You're welcome. So the first question that jumps out of all that is... What's a badass babe? <laughs> spiritual badass babe. Not just a badass babe, but a spiritual badass babe. And I love that question. So anyone can be a spiritual badass. And men, if you're listening to this, Stanley, you as well. If anyone has ever a girlfriend, a wife, a spouse, whatever, if anyone's ever called you a babe, you can be a spiritual badass babe as well. So a spiritual badass is someone who truly embodies themselves, remembers who the heck they are, why they're here, why they're on this, this planet, living in full authenticity, speaking their voice, being vulnerable, just being themselves fully. And that's something that I embody every single day. And that's what makes me a spiritual badass. Um, first of all, in response to that, I already consider myself a spiritual badass. So, and, I, yes! I'm, guess, and I'm guessing you are too. <laughs> you want to call me a babe? Go right ahead. I'm secure enough. I can handle yes, that. Babe. Okay. Thank you. Um, now, one of my experiences has been that when you are open like that, you're authentic like that. You were vulnerable like that. Every so often, you catch a little bit of heat and you get stepped on a little bit. I mean, I, I can imagine that happens to you too sometimes, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, that's for sure. And the, sometimes, I always say, like, the more light that you shine on this world, whether that's you being a healer, whether that's you being authentic, speaking your, your vulnerability, whatever it is, the more darkness attaches to you, whether that's people trying to beat you up, like not physically, actually, but people stepping on you, people talking crap about you, the online space being all crazy, whatever it may be. But it's remembering who you are, remembering where you came from, like what are your morals? What are your own values? And then keep guiding with that light, whether whatever the outside world has for, has for you, screw that, disregard that. There's always gonna be naysayers. There's always gonna be people like talking crap essentially. Live, live your truth, live your light. You've got this, babe. Well, let me ask you a question. 
Where did you come from? <laughs> the cosmos. Yes. Well, that we're, we're all we're all from the cosmos. Yes, we are. So I am very big on Akashic Records. Um, I read for myself. I read for others as well. I've had multiple readers read for me. I, I love the Akashic Records. And I've actually had 1,358 past lives, which is a shit ton. Um, I really do believe that this is probably my last one. I've in I'm in my early 30s, and I've done more in this life than many people will do in their entire life thus far. Um, I have I still have a lot more to go. It is not my time anytime soon. I've got a lot a lot to live. But yeah, I I remember some of those past lives. I've healed some of those past lives, and then some of them were in the future, some of them in the past. Like time isn't linear for the cosmos so so some are in human form some are not in human form and i like i'm i'm pushing all the time and it's it's beautiful that i i believe in that as well um all big on that so you started out you had said you had told me before that you were in your 20s or pretty much most of the decade of your 20s, you were working, but you were burnt out. You were sick. You didn't feel you didn't feel good. And one day you just sort of said, screw this, right? Can do you remember yeah, that I mean, day? Do you remember that day? What day it was? Yeah. So it's actually, it was something that's been creeping up for me for a couple of months, actually. And I was like, it's all right. It's it's coming closer. It's coming closer. I was like, I think I want to do this. I think I want to do this. I think I want to do this. But I'm also like not a very big planner. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm just going to figure it out where I go, when I go. Um, and yeah, I one day came up and I'm like, you know what? screw it. Today is the day. I have enough. I, that day, I walked into my manager's office. I put in my two weeks notice. I started packing up my car. I bought a ticket to Thailand, a one-way ticket to Thailand that same day, and started looking for someone to buy my car, someone to take over my lease and my apartment. Started packing all my crap, got a storage unit, and the rest has been kind of history. I've been traveling ever since. It's been eight years already since I've done that, and currently, I reside in Colombia in Medellin and I am so grateful for this path that I took because I wouldn't be the person that I am today if I didn't take that leap of faith you know it, it's like I, I you know I had a similar experience I didn't pack up and tour the world but I had February 1st 2009 it had been leading up to it leading up to it at that time I was I wasn't at my max weight but I was 320 pounds Four, four months away from turning 50, uh, knees hurt, legs hurt, back hurt, hadn't had a heart attack yet, hadn't had a stroke yet, wasn't on high blood pressure medication yet, but probably should have been, um, wasn't on diabetes medication yet, but probably should have been, all these things. And I woke up and I told my wife, I'm done playing this game. That's exactly what happened with me. I'm done. I was so, like to a point, and I really hate saying these words because like I don't believe in it at the moment, but I was literally sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I believe like we are the products of what we say. We are our manifestations. And like, that's why I don't want to say these words over and over again, but literally I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Like everything, anxiety, depression, insomnia, horrible IBS, celiac disease. Like I was going blind. Doctors could not figure out what the heck was wrong with me. I went to specialists on specialists on specialists. I spent most of my 20s in uh, doctor's offices, like just trying to get better. And then Eastern medicine came into, came into fruition for me. I, I got a, like while in Thailand, that's when my spiritual journey really started. And 
I started meditating. I started doing yoga more often. I was already doing yoga a little bit and like working out. Like my physical body was okay-ish more or less, but really started practicing like sitting in silence, sitting like letting all of that crap get out of my mind. And honestly, meditation alone healed. I want to say like 80, 85% of all of my problems because what stress is, is that monkey chatter. And what anxiety is, is that stress is that monkey you live your little brain talking over and over and over again and if you learn to sit in silence if you learn to calm it your anxiety goes away all of a sudden you can sleep like i was like whoa this is incredible meditation for me is a non-negotiable at this moment i meditate at least twice a day sometimes more during covid i was meditating like seven times a day because heck what else was i going to do but it is a non-negotiable and it's so simple so simple just a couple of minutes a day just meditating and one thing led to another and that's how i started in the in the career choice that i'm at right now because i was like this is amazing if i can if I'm able to heal my own self with all of these practices, whether that's EFT tapping, Reiki, going to acupuncture, whatever, I can help other people heal that as well. Because what society doesn't want you to know, what corporate America doesn't want you to know is like what they give you is like this little pill essentially. And but that doesn't cover, like go into the deep roots of what we're really going through. Why are these things happening? What are the underlying truths? What are the underlying traumas in yourself, in your body that this is causing? And once you get into those underlying things, that's when you can start untangling them and start like getting into your subconscious and healing all of these traumas, healing your body. Our minds are such powerful things. You can heal so much with just a reprogramming of your mind. And this is why I'm so passionate about the stuff that I do now and the work that I do with Expansion Alchemy. We're looking to go, and go into corporations because I don't want anyone else to be stressed and burnt out just like I was in corporate America. If I had the tools then that I do today, I'd still probably be in corporate America. Thankfully, that is not my path. But I'm able to help others now. And I'm so passionate about like helping people heal themselves, finding their truth, finding their authenticity, and living their best freaking lives because they deserve it. See, what you went through was necessary to become who you are. It's 100%. Just like, yeah. It, and, and back to your thing about meditating. You know what they say about meditating? Everybody should meditate 20 minutes a day unless you're too busy. In which case you should meditate for an hour. Yeah. Yeah, 40 hours. 100 percent for sure. You you can always find time for meditation. And like meditation, you can do it however you want. There's no right way or wrong way to meditate. Like a lot of people when they think of meditation, they're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be sitting on top of a mountain going oh wearing a turban on my head. Like you can, but that's not realistic for most people. You can do a walking meditation. You can meditate while working I do, I do out. that all the time. Hours of oh, walking meditation. Me too. I did one today. I went for a two-hour walk this morning. I was just telling Stanley before our call, um, I'm, I'm, I'm finishing up a 72-hour fast, so my workouts have been very light. So I went on a two-hour walk this morning. I meditated. I did breath work on that walk. It was so beautiful. Just do what resonates with you, what feels good in your body. Figure it out for you because every person is different. So just figure out what works for you. So the next question is, what's on the, you tell me your fast is up in two hours. Oh, um, I can't what, wait. What's, what's on the menu? <laughs> I'm, uh, oh, fruit I'm or fruit, I'm guessing. Fast. Yeah, I'm breaking my fast with a banana, some blueberries and mangoes. And then I'm going to wait about an hour and then I'll have like an actual meal after that. Yeah. It is, I'm yeah, saying and, vegan and, today, vegan today, and then tomorrow probably vegetarian. The day after I'll introduce fish. Oh, no. <laughs> vegan all the time. <laughs> I was vegan for two years, actually. Yeah, that's To me, that was one of the best decisions I ever made. When I, I mean, I, I, I've been veg. I was veg. I was vegetarian for five years, and then one day, it's funny. I um, I was walking ten or more miles a day. I was eating what I thought was healthy, and I couldn't get my weight 
below a certain point. You hit a plateau. Just, and, and, yeah. it, and it would, it would but, but it would, it kept going between 190 and 220, 190 and 220, 190 and 220. And I said, I'm doing something wrong. So I sat there and I gave up butter, cheese, ice cream. Dairy. I, 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 I gave up those things. And I said, I wonder if I can get down to 180 if I do that. Well, no, I couldn't get down to 180. I got down to 130. Holy shit. <laughs> yes, I melted. And then since that time, I've put on 10 to 15 pounds of muscle. But I, I had to get that small to get the fat off of me. Because, wow. you know, and um, but yeah, it just, it made a massive difference. And I mean, I just know for me, you talk about health. I know in the last 10 years, I've been sick one time for three days. And that's all of this, you know, this is well before COVID. Went through. Okay, one time for three days. And those three days I did not walk with the exception of those three days. I have walked at least two, three hours a day, every day over those 10 years. Beautiful. I love yeah. hearing that. And, and, this is, and this is a guy who was a 300 plus pound couch potato. Heck yes. What an yeah. inspiration. So my, my point is what Anya is saying works and you can do it. And if you do it, the benefits are unreal. Um, you know, you, you talk about Thailand. I've got a good friend who lives in Thailand. He, he moved there. And he became, he's in his late fifties and he became a runner and, wow. and doing competitive running. And he was asking me, how can I get better? How can I get better? I said, you need to take the leap and go plant-based. He went plant-based within a month or two. Unbelievable. How much Amazing. better he felt. Amazing. His, all his record times. So it, it is there. Um, you know, if you're going to eat meat, fish is not, totally horrible me i didn't have to make that decision because i've never liked fish so i've, I've, I've never, <laughs> that I've was never easy been a, for you you know I, mine I was, was like i was yeah i was pescatarian for 10 years then went vegan for two years and i realized i feel my body physical body feels much better eating fish so now i'm mostly pescatarian yeah everybody is different yeah everyone's different find out what works for you but test it. Test out different things, whether that's a vegan diet, a raw vegan diet, vegetarian, whether that's trying EFT tapping, meditation, Ho'oponopono, whatever. Figure out what works for you, but do the freaking work. That's the thing. you got to do the work. Well, well I, I can tell you what will not work for you. <laughs> Sitting on a couch eating potato chips. <laughs> ultra, all eating ultra processed foods will not work for you. Eating fast foods junk foods will not work for you. And that includes, you know, there can be vegan junk foods, there can be vegetarian junk foods. Um, you know, or Oreos. Oreos are vegan. Knock yourself out. If you eat too many of them, I can promise you it's not going to work for you. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so, so you got into this. You, you started, you came into yourself. You came into your power. You woke up. And you realized who you were. And like most people who do that, you said, time to go kick some ass. Time to become a badass. <laughs> yes. And so you started doing this. Now, you said you're in Columbia right now? Yes, that's where I live. I've been here for five years. So you just, you just hop all around. And, and well, this wanting. is home base. Like I, I've been here for five years. This is home for me. The community, the spirituality, the mountains. It's it's everything I've been longing for and looking for without even knowing that I was looking for. And I, I found my home. So so we're not getting you back in the state. Uh, I'm going there next month, actually. I'll be back in the state for a month, but no, like full time living, probably not. Not yeah, to yeah, say yeah. never, because who knows what's going to happen. I might fall in love and we might move to Idaho. I have no idea. 
<laughs> but for now, this is home. Yeah, gotcha. No, nothing wrong with that. And the main thing is, are you happy? Oh, I couldn't be more happier. Like things have just been so beautiful in my life lately. And it took a long time. It wasn't an easy route. Like even starting Expansion Alchemy, like that I went through a mental breakdown with Expansion Alchemy before I ever started it. And it, it, it took a lot of me sitting in that silence, me sitting in meditation, me sitting with plant medicines, me doing the work. And it's it's all paying off and more right now. And I'm I'm so incredible, incredibly happy and grateful as well. Do you think a lot of the crap you went through that was on you? Do you think that was from past lives, stuff you needed to clear out? Some of it, yes. Um, some of it was in this life. Some of it was karmic loop for sure. Um but it's all done. It's all said and done now, thankfully. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of other stuff that because we're always healing. Like if it's not this life, it's another life. It's, it's something, it's always something. But um, embrace the good moments. Like when you are feeling good, it, it, lean into that frequency, lean into that vibration of feeling good and always, always, always stay in gratitude. Gratitude is the ultimate form of receivership. The more we're grateful for, the more universe God has, has more for us to be grateful for. Just so stay within yourself, know your light, know your values, like know the end result. Yeah, there's going to be bumps along the way. Heck, like we're, we're human at the end of the day in this life, but stay on that path and on that mission. Can we switch gears? Yeah. Okay. In case you haven't noticed, the world's a little messed up right now. Unfortunately. Okay. I know I have my ideas. I'm sure you have your ideas. Let's talk about how do we change that? You're on. You can't change people that don't want to be changed. What you can do is work on yourself and with working on yourself, becoming a bigger light in this world. Yes, things are going to come into your life as well, but that's okay. You're going to inspire the people and wake up the people that need to hear your message, that need that transformation. You just need to keep working on yourself. That's the only change that you can do, just being the best version of yourself. See, I believe you sort of hinted it. I'm going to say what you just said in different words. You're probably saying the okay. same exact thing, just in okay. different words. I, I believe you can change people. And the way you change people is not by grabbing them by the neck and saying, you need to change, you need to change, you need to change. And anybody who's, any guy who's married knows that going to your wife saying, you need to change doesn't work. Okay. Um, so, but the way you can change people is just like you said, by changing yourself first. It's like putting your oxygen mask on on the airplane. You have to put your oxygen mask on before you can help your child. And you put your mask on and then you begin spreading your light. You begin helping other people. It catches on. People see that. People learn from that experience. And as they learn from that experience, they slowly wake up and they slowly change. I, I, I'm a believer... I believe the world right now is in the process of the greatest spiritual awakening in human history. I just got chills when you said that, for sure. And I believe it's going to take a tipping point, a critical mass of human beings to wake up, decide, decide enough's enough, want to change. And what that critical mass is, some people say 5%, people, some people say 
I say 10%, there's 8, 8 billion people in the world. 10% would be 800 million. Let's round it off to a billion. So the process is for a billion of us, which while that is a large number, that is a smaller number than you think, a billion of us to simultaneously wake up and shine. It's and starting. Yes, it is starting. It's been starting since COVID. It's been it's been happening. I've been seeing more and more people awake, trying things that they've never tried, trying meditation and being all enlightened. Like it is happening. But yeah, a billion people is still like tiny, 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 tiny bits. But what we can do is just keep working on ourselves and inspiring those to wake up as well, whether that's offering them a meditation, whatever, just keep working on you. Well, I said two things about COVID. You know, I, I did a lot of deep thinking during COVID and COVID actually was a positive experience for me because it allowed me time to sit back and do my stuff and think, not have to worry about traveling, not have to worry about a lot of these other things. Now, uh, now I'm sure if you ask my neighbor down the street whose husband died from COVID and she herself almost died from it, she would have a different perspective than I have. But the, but the two things that I realized from COVID is that one, I said, first thing is it's the ultimate IQ test for humankind. You know, what will we learn from the experience? And I think we're, I think we learned a lot and I think there's still a lot of lessons we haven't learned or some of us have learned and some of us are, don't particularly want to learn. So that's, that's still ongoing. And the second thing is ties into what you sort of just said. I believe that there is a massive amount of pent up energy resulting from COVID and I predicted that there will be a massive creativity burst when we emerge from the process. And I think we're seeing that to some extent, but even that, all of these things, it's kind of like COVID accelerated a lot of trends that were already happening. Um, but we've kind of pulled back from that and it's time, it's about time to make another push. And all of these things, they happen in their time and in their place. And one of the things that I've learned, I imagine you've learned, is, do you, okay, do you ever feel like I've learned all these things? Look what they've really done for me. They really, really work. Damn it. Why don't you wake up and do the same thing? Why, why are you screwing around? taking your time. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Sometimes You're, I do want to take people and shake them up, but yeah, yeah, that is not the way to do it. No, but, 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 you, but, you do, but you do feel that way. I, I have before, yes. With certain people, I'm like, come on, come on. Why aren't you getting this? Yeah, and the solution is love, compassion, patience, and understanding and being there for them. I mean, like I had somebody yesterday, um, I hadn't talked to the guy in probably 10 plus years. He told me his wife has stage four cancer. And I sat there and I said, have any of your doctors, her doctors talked to you about the role of nutrition in her healing process? No, they have not. And I sat there and I said, well, the research out there is pretty clear that the less animal products you eat, the less animal dairy you eat, and in her case, maybe even eliminating them completely. And sugar. While, while, while there's no guarantee on anything, odds are it's, it's definitely not going to hurt her. And odds are it could help her quite a bit and really stop this cancer in its tracks. Although when it's stage four, you don't know how far gone it is, you know, whatever. But and he was at least open to that. I, I gave him, I took a thumb drive. I gave him a bunch of information. 
he, he came to my house, I put all these videos, all this information on it, uh, copies of the research materials. And his wife is actually a doctor. So, and she's in her 70s. And whether or not she'll embrace it, I don't know. But all I could do was share the information with them. Hope with love and compassion and understanding and hope that they will receive it and say, if you have questions, pick up the phone, call me. You're welcome to call me anytime. That's all you can do. That's and all you can do. You, yeah. 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 And, and, you know, my inclination was, damn it. It's pretty clear here. Just do this, start doing this immediately, drop what you're doing, start doing this and give it a try. But that's not the way it works. Exactly. Yeah. All you can do is keep shining that example, but you gave it with love and hopefully it is received with that same love as you gave it with. Okay. Now let me ask you a question. Yeah. Tying your experience and the parallels between your experience and my experience. Okay. Weight is a little bit different than what you were going through because weight problems manifest themselves outward. You know, so you you, you can. Well, I, I was fifty pounds overweight as well. Like yeah, okay. I'm five foot tall, so that's a lot for that's for a substantial. Girl. That's <laughs> yeah. substantial. Yeah. So, did did you have people pointing you to the solution for a long time before you finally adopted that solution? I mean, I, I mean, I for years. I had people pointing me, sort semi pointing me in the right direction. And I ignored it, fought it, ignored it, fought it, ignored it, fought it. Did you have any of that when you look back at it? Yes and no. Um, I was seeing signs of certain things. Like, for example, I was dating a guy whose dad was a Eastern medicine practitioner. He did acupuncture, he did kinesiology, he did muscle testing, all those things. And I was always like, oh, okay, like this is some crazy, like woo woo stuff. But, like, at a point, I went to go see his dad and I was like, okay, I give up. And that's actually what transpired this. They're like, okay. Like, I'm looking for a way of healing. Western medicine isn't working for me. Let's try this Eastern medicine stuff. So that was my first experience with it. Then I was dating a guy for three years who was an EFT tapping practitioner, like a certified EFT tapping coach who was amazing at it. And I always saw him like tapping on his face, like in the corner of the room all the time. And I'm like, this is crazy woo woo stuff. Like, what are you actually doing? Like, this, this crap doesn't work. No. And he's like, all right, let's sit down have a session, like have a full on session. You've got to give your full belief though, like that it's going to work. We did a session for anxiety. It was like my anxiety went away, like in a blink of an eye after that session, just like a 45 minute session. I was like, whoa, this shit actually works. Like that's incredible. I had little stuff like that popping in, but it wasn't, it wasn't for, for long. I was also very young. So like my, my entire circle wasn't into any of this crap. Now, now every single person, I don't have a person that's not into some kind of spiritual woo stuff, but like my circles were very different I was very young I grew up in Chicago like partying drugs alcohol sex all this stuff like we just hung out in very different circles I hung out in very different circles than I do now yeah I'm sure you did <laughs> and we, I think we all can say that I mean first of all we were all young at least once yeah, I My too, goodness. <laughs> yeah that's like a story um you know, I heard um, Jackie Kennedy when she was in the White House was she had the Queen Elizabeth. She had the Queen of England. She was showing her around the White House. And just then the elevator opens up and some of her children run out screaming and making all this noise and everything else. And Jackie Kennedy is all embarrassed. And she tells the Queen, she says, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. And Queen Elizabeth said, relax, I've got one of those at home too. Prince Charles, <laughs> you know, so, it, you know, so yeah, we, we, we've all been there. And now it's a testament to Zoom calls. Everyone's like, oh, no, there's children running around. I'm so sorry. Like, it's okay. We, we have them too. <laughs> Yeah, dog, dogs bark. It's like I, I did an interview the other day. She said, "What happens if my dog starts barking?" I said, "Well, your dog's gonna be part of your the year." Dog starts barking. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, how you doing? Hi, Spot. 
Um, We're a dog friendly podcast here. Yes, absolutely. So it's all going with the flow. Um, let me ask you, as we go to wrap this up, do you have anything you want to add, any advice you want to share? With yeah, people? Um, for any listeners, you can do, be, and have absolutely anything that you put your mind to. You have the power to control your mind, to create your reality, whatever it is, whether it's going off to Thailand, whether it's falling in love, whether it's manifesting money, manifesting health, whatever, you can do, be, and have absolutely anything. If you can think it, you can have it. You can bring it into your reality. Don't let any of those naysayers tell you no, because there's going to be a ton of them. When I first left to, to Thailand, I had so many people tell me like, oh, what if what if something bad happens? What if you you do this? What if what if it's gonna be what if you're gonna hate it? What if you what if what if what if like but what if I fall in love? What if I find myself? What if I heal myself? What if something good comes out of this? What if I actually love this experience? You have the power to create that reality, whatever you want. Freaking go after it, babe. You've got this. You are a badass, babe. You can do be and have absolutely anything that you want. All those, there, there's a name for people who tell you no all the time. You know, you know that, no, 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 no. You know what that name is? What? Family. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, some friends too. Yeah, yeah some friends too. But okay, family, 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 family well. and friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, well, you know, you know. Okay, like you sort of hinted at it before. I'm guessing. I'm guessing two things. I'm guessing you still have some lifetime friends who've been your friends for a long time. You still have a, two or three of those around, I'm guessing. Not many, no. But maybe, but maybe one or two. And maybe not, okay. And, and I'm, I was going to say, I'm guessing you have a totally different circle of friends now. Which completely like different circle of friends. Completely different. I do have one girlfriend that I've been friends with maybe 15 years, but not lifetimes. I moved, um, we moved into the suburbs when I was in high school. So like the kids that I hung out with, like don't really talk with them from like grade school. So that's okay. It's fun. We're all on different paths. We're all finding ourselves and whatever is meant to be is meant for me, meant to be for all of us, always in perfect divine timing and divine alignment. Perhaps you will run into them again one day. You never know. And maybe if I come to Chicago ever, we'll see. You know, you, you, you might walk the world out your door. works in mysterious ways. That's you might sure. walk out. Okay. I'll tell you how the world works in mysterious ways. Okay. One of my older brothers, he was in London and with his wife, and they wanted to figure out a good restaurant to go to for dinner. They called back to the States. They called, um, one of their friends, one of their friends' parents. Um, they they were from London, so they knew the place pretty well. They called them to ask them where should they go eat for dinner. They didn't answer the phone. So King called them, didn't know where they were. They're walking around London. Out of the blue, somebody taps them on the shoulder. And it was the parents. And, <laughs> and they all and they all wound up having dinner together. Amazing. You know, so amazing. It really does work in mysterious ways. I have shit. a similar, more or less similar story that I, I'd like to share really quickly before we wrap up. So I was in the in New York, in the middle of Times Square. I was on a business trip and I like I had business meetings here and there, but I'm sitting at this bar waiting for a friend of mine to come. And while I'm sitting at this bar, I overhear a voice that I recognize. I turn around, I'm like looking, I'm like, who, like, I know this voice, who is this? And a bodyguard moves out and it's this guy, Adam, that I know. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Adam, out of all places, like I met him at an airport in Chicago, very strange. And then um, we ended up getting a drink and we went on our on on merry ways. Two weeks later, I'm at an airport flying from Phoenix to, where was I going? To Mexico somewhere. And same thing happens. I recognize a, a, a voice. I'm looking around. It's this other guy also named 
Adam, who's from the UK. I'm like, what are you doing in Phoenix? Like, what? <laughs> Very strange how the synchronicity came about. And then shortly after, I met this other Adam that I was supposed to meet for that particular reason. I was like, okay, the universe is giving me Adams. <laughs> yeah, me, me, it's women named Amy. You know, I've got, okay. you know, there's like four or five Amy's, this Amy, that Amy. My wife's got a friend, Amy. You know, so so whenever we're talking about Amy, we go, you're Amy, this Amy, that Amy, you know. Um, <laughs> Living in so, Colombia, I get it with all the wands. There's all the wands over here. <laughs> well, there, there's Don Juan. There's, yeah, Juan <laughs> Sebastian, Juan Julio, Juan Pablo. Oh, my goodness, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, there you go. This has been a pleasure. Very much appreciated. Thank you so much, Stanley. This has been absolute, an absolute pleasure. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. Be limitless. Focus your mind, train your body, feed your spirit, because this is your time.